In today's video, I want to address some comments, questions that I have been receiving from family and friends like, Bitcoin is a scam. Should I buy it based on its past performance? It doesn't look too good. Is it too late to buy Bitcoin? And the big question, how do I buy Bitcoin if I wanted to buy Bitcoin? The video is a little longer than I usually make, so I, pro I have provided some markers below in the description to help you skip through what you're not interested in. I hope it helps. I like to try to honor your time. Hola everyone, it's Miss B Money here from Crypto Connections. Welcome back and a warm hello to those of you who are new here. If you are new here, it would really mean the world to me if you click on the subscribe button below and become part of our community. And be sure to also click on the notification bell to be notified of my latest uploads. Now before I get started, I want to remind you I am not a financial advisor. I got into crypto early in 2017 and did so because I believe in Bitcoin. I have always had a strong feeling that this is the future and no matter what this market does, it will be adopted into our everyday life and increase in value. What I love most about this crypto space is that you don't have to take life changing risk to have a chance to transform your life. Of course, this is only my opinion. And what I'm about to share with you in this video is only my opinion. It's me sharing my thoughts of why I started this journey, why I hold steadfast on my journey, and why I share my story with others. In this space, I have said many times, it's so important to do your own research. Everyone's situation is different. Everyone's risk tolerance is different. Everyone's amount of liquid assets they can play with is different. Don't trust anything that I say. Even though I try to do my best to only share with you factual information, but again, it always comes down to my opinion. And the guy next door or the girl next door may have a different opinion. That's the great thing about freedom of choice. We can research, we can make an uninformed decision or an informed decision. We can risk a lot or we can risk a little. Again, my opinion has always been take a risk, but spread it out so that risk is less to your overall portfolio. So my point here is only risk what you can safely afford to lose. This space is on the leading edge of change. There will always be some winners and there will always be some losers. But it, it's like buying a lottery ticket. Actually, I think this is a lot less riskier <laughs> of an investment for your money, only because the odds of winning the lottery are so low. But it is like buying a lottery ticket. You're going to have some losers, you're going to have some winners, and you might even hit a jackpot. Okay, before I get too off topic, let's get into it. Some of my family members and friends have told me early on that Bitcoin is a scam. It's understandable that they believe that because just after myself venturing into this space and finally telling my family members, a lot of the media and news agencies were feeding people's heads that criminals were using Bitcoin because it wasn't traceable. They believed it is a digital currency that could be sent across the world in, a sec in secret with no trace. Well, even though this is true that you can send cryptocurrency across borders and the world so effortlessly, most cryptocurrency is very traceable on the blockchain. It's similar to using our bank accounts. Every transaction of where the money comes from, to who it goes to, is all recorded and verified along the way. So if you think you're going to buy Bitcoin and not claim any gains on your taxes, think again. Since early 2017, I have seen this space transform. At one point, it was don't buy Bitcoin. Even places like I think it was JP Morgan told employees that if they bought Bitcoin, 
they would be fired. Then, later in 2018, that same firm bought up millions of dollars in Bitcoin. You see, the rich don't want us to get rich. The old paradigm is money is power, and they don't want to lose that power. It's really why, why we all want it. Money gives us power. And that's why they made bartering even illegal in some countries. They want us poor. That's a whole other video for sure. So it is my belief that the power that be really didn't think this evolution into cryptocurrency would be adopted so easily or so quickly. When they saw it was and sort of missed the boat, they got together and started the, to manipulate this market. I always ask myself, why would anyone want to manipulate this market unless they wanted a piece of the action? So no, I am confident Bitcoin is not a scam. And you can search articles on, say, Cointelegraph and see a large number of organizations are now setting up their businesses to adopt cryptocurrency. Bitcoin is making a name for itself and improvements are coming to speed up transactions and making the fees much more reasonable. I have always said, whoever owns a little bit of Bitcoin or cryptocurrency for that matter is a pioneer. During the gold rush, we would have been the first ones panning for gold and dis discovering the crops. Today, we are everyday people taking a chance, investing a small amount here and there, and believing this is the future. Another question that I often get from family and friends is, should I buy Bitcoin? Based on its past performance, people lost a lot, and I can't risk that. Well, the first thing I say is, if you can't afford to invest, then don't. Personally, I won't invest more than say 5 to 10% of, of my liquid assets and I would suggest you do the same. Let me be clear. I didn't say overall assets. I said liquid assets. Also, if you're going to lay awake at night, then you're not ri very risk adverse and really, you shouldn't be investing. But what I like to do is invest roughly the same amount in each project. Of course, if I feel more like it's full-fledged gambling, then I will invest less. But my thinking is if I say invest $200 in this project and that project and so on, overall a handful of promising projects, then my risk level is balanced throughout. Who cares if one of those projects doesn't pan out? I may lose $200 on one project as it goes completely bust. And then on another one, the project is a huge success and my $200 is now worth $10,000. It happens to others. It's happened before. If you look at history of say Amazon, when they first came to the market, there was a big surge. Then shortly after that surge, the stock crashed terribly, terribly crashed. Sound familiar? Now, if we had all bought Amazon stocks back in the day and held on to it until today, we would be multi-millionaires. The problem is we allow our emotions to get involved. And that's a big no-no in this space. People think that because it hit 20,000 in late 2017 and fell just a matter of weeks later to $3,000, that it's too risky to get involved. I have to challenge that. Bitcoin has had at least four major moves. And it's actually been declared dead over 300 times. Let me just share a quick video with you from Cointelegraph that gives you a brief overview of this. When the crypto market crashed hard last week, Naysayers once again predicted the end of Bitcoin, but we are used to this. In its 10-year lifespan, Bitcoin has been declared dead a total of 326 times. Bitcoin not only survived, but came back stronger. Now, let's take a look at Bitcoin's worst moments and resurrections over the past few years. After reaching a new all-time high, the first Bitcoin bubble burst due to overspeculation and the hack of now-defunct exchange Mt. Gox. 
Bitcoin dropped from almost $30 to a $2 bottom on October 20th, 2011. In April 2013, a banking crisis in Cyprus triggered the price of Bitcoin to rally. Mt. Gox, overwhelmed by high transaction volumes, suspended trading, causing Bitcoin to fall sharply in the following hours. Increased investment from China in Bitcoin made the prices skyrocket in the fall of 2013. Concerned by Bitcoin's increasing popularity, the Chinese central bank began to clamp down on crypto by banning domestic financial institutions from offering crypto services. As a result, Bitcoin lost 60% of its value in under two weeks. Together with the Mt. Gox bankruptcy in February 2014, the Chinese ban marked the beginning of a steady decline, reaching a bottom of $209 in January 2015. The period of relative stability that followed paved the way for a massive crypto rally in late 2016. In the last quarter of Bitcoin's most bullish year, China continued its crackdown by banning exchanges and ICOs. The ban deeply impacted the market, but that didn't stop Bitcoin. After a final surge, bringing prices to an all-time high of $20,000 in December 2017, Bitcoin crashed again, losing almost a third of its value within just one week. That was the start of a very long winter for Bitcoin, and it's still pretty cold outside. So hodlers, don't lose hope. Remember, the night is always darkest just before the dawn. Cointelegraph. Like, subscribe, and hodl. I did a video earlier showing that year over year, the pattern shows exactly what this video was pointing to. That every time Bitcoin falls, its new low is still higher than its last low. And it's even higher than its previous high. So it always continues to grow. We have to step back and look at the bigger picture. And I always ask myself, what are the billionaires in this world doing? What are they investing in? Well, it's Bitcoin and nanotechnology as far as I know right now. Right now, these are still affordable for the common person to invest in, which is why I personally am beyond grateful for this crypto space, because I believe as mass adoption spreads across this planet, it will become untouchable in the way that we play with it today. I really suggest you research and look for information on, say, the history of Bitcoin. Check out some of my previous videos. I'll actually link one in the card above. The time you spend researching now could make you thousands, if not millions. Of course, this is all speculative on my part and many, many others, but in my opinion, don't be too late to the show. That brings me to the next question that my family and friends ask me all too often. Is it too late to buy Bitcoin? Well, I actually think it's the perfect time to buy Bitcoin and so do many others. I did a Google trend search this morning for cryptocurrency and look how much more interest there is recently. I consider myself in a great position only because I got in way back when but if I was thinking of buying more, then now would definitely be the time. Could it fall lower? Of course. But based on my overall plan, in a few years, I honestly won't care. Now, of course, this again is based on my situation, the research that I've done, and it's not financial advice in any way. If you blindly follow me, then I'm worried for you. You have to do what's right for your situation. You need to make a decision that's right for you. So after having these discussions with my family and friends, some of them say, so my big question is, how do I buy Bitcoin? I always like to give them options. One of my suggestions to them is you can do a Google search and look for Bitcoin ATMs in your area. It's where you basically insert cash and you would get a piece of paper showing the amount of Bitcoin. It would also include your private and your public key. Now just a few words of caution here. The fees are very steep at these machines, but if you're not very techy, then it may be the best way for you to purchase Bitcoin. I myself have used it, but only because I now purchase Bitcoin as gifts for birthdays, Christmas presents, etc. for family and friends. 
I love the look on their face when they get a piece of paper for their gift and they give me that blank stare like what is this <laughs> I do this because I know someday they will call me and say oh my god you changed my life and I should have listened to you and bought more I try to encourage my family and friends to buy some because they are my immediate family and I care about them I am in no way telling you to go out and buy Another word of caution is that when you use this big, these Bitcoin machines, that piece of paper is basically your bank account. If you lose that paper and have not kept a copy of it anywhere, you have lost those funds. Also, that piece of paper contains what's called your public and private key. It's like your pin to your bank account. If someone were to see your private key, they could technically steal your Bitcoin. So please be extra vigilant with that piece of paper and keep it in a secure location. It's the new and improved gold bar, to, so to speak, or at least that's what we're hoping. Another way to buy Bitcoin that can be a good way for those new to crypto is to open a Coinbase account. I won't go into the exact details of opening an account in this video, but Coinbase basically allows you to open an account, link to your bank account, and purchase Bitcoin. And Coinbase does set a limit as to show you how much you can buy, I think it's weekly, but it's fairly generous for someone dipping their foot into the Bitcoin water, so to speak. So in conclusion, I really don't believe Bitcoin is a scam. I believe the powers that be are trying to manipulate the market to make us think it could be a dead currency. And I don't think it's too late to buy. I think it's actually the perfect opportunity to buy. And I wish that all my family and friends at least take a little bit of risk and buy a little bit of Bitcoin. And I can't wait for the day that we all look back and say, I can't believe I got it for only this much. That's it for today's video. Hope you enjoyed and if you did, please be sure to hit the thumbs up and leave a comment. It really helps to grow the channel. Have a blessed day everyone and until next time, hasta luego.